Hello, my name is Eddie Shore, and I'm a slot car racer. Uh, today I want to talk to you about something that I've been waiting for for quite a while, and that is the new book put out by Philippe de Lespinay about slot car racing. I want to tell you a little bit about my, my background. Um, I was a slot car racer back in the 1960s for most of my teenage years, and I was familiar with a lot of the ready-to-run cars that were out at the time, although I really wasn't able to own many of them. Uh, but I raced pretty actively throughout my uh, teen years. Uh, I took a good 35-year break from racing and got back in touch with one of my old uh, friends when I was back racing then, a guy named Gil Gunderson, who is mentioned in the book, by the way. We had a ragtag team called Team Bula. Uh, we weren't sponsored by anybody, but we went traveling from track to track, and I got to learn a lot about Southern California by uh, being in, on that team and seeing all the different raceways that were around. So years later, as I uh, put a lot of that behind me, and I was wondering what's going on with slot car racing, it was in about uh, 2005. I decided to see if anything was up with racing, and I just looking around on the internet and calling up here and there, and uh, I, I found there was a slot car raceway in Buena Park, California, and I just called them cold and asked them if they happened to know a guy named Gil Gunderson, and they said, yeah, oh yeah, he's here every Thursday night racing. So I decided to pop in and surprise him and uh, showed up. And uh, he put a controller in my hand, put a car on the track, and it was just like riding a bicycle. I got right back into it. The smell of the wintergreen as soon as I walked into the, the slot car raceway was something that instantly brought me back to those uh, times when I was a teenager that I loved racing. So um, I started coming there little by little, and one of the people I met at that time was Philippe. And Philippe was uh, telling me very excitedly about uh, the, the new retro racing that was coming on the scene and was telling me how it was very inexpensive to get back into it. They were thinking of coming up with kits for doing scratch building so that people could get into it in a very affordable way. And so I did start racing again and, uh, and little by little got dragged back into it. And actually I, I am at this point number of years later. I'm, I've been racing for twice as long as I did as, I, as when I was a kid, but I'm racing primarily three different forms of racing. I'm racing in a 30-second scale club, the ready-to-run cars that are actually newer than what we were racing back as a kid, and I'm racing the scratch-built hard-body cars at Buena Park Raceway, and I also race the retro racing. Well, let's get back to the book here for a second. Many racers were waiting for a long time for this book to come out. Uh, it had been talked about for probably 10 years or more. And uh, we were really, I think many of us were expecting it to be a book that was going to be about pro racers, uh, the people who we followed uh, during the heyday of the racing in the late 60s and maybe early 70s. I, I stopped racing in 1968, right at the end of the year. So I missed uh, the the uh, 1970s entirely. But what the book actually is, is almost encyclopedic in terms of the content. It is covering almost everything and more that you would want to know about ready to run cars that were being produced during the 60s. There is quite a bit of information about the, uh, the history of slot cars going back to debunking some of the theories about where they came from and lots of little personal tidbits that some people maybe have talked about and we, those of us that are into racing have seen on the blogs. But Philippe really did a fantastic job of putting it all between two covers. And these two covers, by the way, are quite solid. It's a, it's a very strong, uh, hard book, this particular hardback. And it's a good thing it is because of how wide it is. You'll see as I open it up, it's wider than two feet when it's all open. And it's okay for holding on a lap nice and sturdy on, on the lap. I'm not so sure it would be as sturdy in the softback version that will be coming out. But as it is, it works fine. It is very wide, full of wonderful photographs, 
it seems to be primarily highlighting the collection that Scott Bader has at the Los Angeles Slot Car Museum. Uh, it shows lots of photos of tracks that were around back at the time. There's some mention of the clubs that uh, were around at the time, but those seem to be less written by Philippe as compared to just getting certain people that he knew that were in the clubs to write little bits about them. Um, as far as demonstrating my eagerness to get the book, I was in touch with uh, Electric Dreams and to find out when they were going to be releasing the book. And as soon as it came online, I made sure that I got online and clicked to buy the book as soon as it was available. I was keeping in touch to find out when were they going to actually have it available for sale and they mentioned that people were going to be able to get signed copies by Philippe and so uh, I did, I, it turned out I was the first one to order it, I was the first one to uh, get down there for the signature and I was the first one to pick it up and I'm so happy that Philippe did sign it uh, that I am number one. So that's something I'm very proud of. I do want to show you that uh, this is something that I had gotten from Philippe uh, quite a few years before and this is uh, something that he also signed. This was his first book. So for people who have this book and were expecting, oh maybe it's just going to be another thing like this about vintage slot cars, well I have to tell you it's way beyond that in terms of the content and all of the information. I mentioned about the pro racers. I guess that's one of the things that I'm disappointed in the book. Uh, while it does talk about the racers in here, it, it feels almost as if he had so much information on the manufacturers and the, all, everything including the, the chassis, the motors, the different wheels, uh, and all the different ready to run cars that were produced back then. It, and all of that seems to be in here, but it felt as if if he had continued with that depth on the pro racers and the, the professional scene back in the late 60s, that the book may have turned out to be almost twice as long as it is. And so a decision seems to have been made where instead of continuing it in the print version, there are links at the end of different sections throughout the book that point to additional information that you can find on the uh, website of uh, the Los Angeles Slot Car Museum. So I find that that's really very helpful. I've been able to go through and see how some of those links work. Let's see. Oh, I would say the, the main thing that I wish that it had that it doesn't is an index. Uh, and that's for somebody like myself. I don't know if it would matter to other people, but I do some researching on and writing about slot cars myself. And it, it's something that I wish it had because I want to be able to go and find, for example, uh, all the references to uh, champion products or all the references to a particular racer like Howie Ursiner. And it's difficult to just go right to those places where those people or those products are mentioned. So that's something that I wish that it had. Uh, perhaps uh, the whole entire book could be put into a digital format, uh, like an ebook. I think that would be then a searchable uh, text, and I think that would be something that I would uh, especially appreciate, but it's maybe not the thing that people are really looking for because it does feel great to hold this solid book in your hand, go through it, and really uh, relive a lot of those times, have a lot of memories sparked uh, of cars that you saw maybe you know over 50 years ago. Uh, and it's just fantastic that it actually has come about, it actually got done, uh, and I'm so happy to be able to hold it in my hands and read through it. Um, it's not the kind of thing that you're going to sit down and read from cover to cover. Uh, I've gone through a couple of the sections already. I wanted to read about the history, I wanted to read about the pro racers, and then I started going through the manufacturers and looking up the ones that I was particularly interested in that I remembered, like Ruskett and Cox, Strombecker, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, it, 
doesn't have information on the newest slot cars, or I should say it has very little information on the newest ready-to-run 30-second scale slot cars like uh, uh, Slot It, Thunder Slot, Revo Slot, those kinds of cars. But that's not the focus of this. So as long as people understand what this is, which is primarily dealing with the 60s uh, and, and the history before that, and in particular all of the thousands of cars that were produced back at that time with a real insider's look on all of these things, I think you'll be very, very satisfied with what it is. So that's about all I've got to say for it for now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about this wonderful book.